Hi, welcome to another episode of Comics Review. I'm your host, Kevin Starkey. The first comic I'm going to talk about today is Warriors of the Duruk. I guess that's how you say that. This is by Creators Edge Press. Um, the, the artist on this is Dave Myers, and the writers are Stephen and Aiden Lindsay. I picked this up just on a whim. It, it sounded interesting, the premise. Um, it's a fantasy genre. Um, animals talk and there's just one little animal he looks like a koala bear to me but I'm not sure what kind of an animal he is because I think he's in the sort of rodent kind of family um, he has a, a turtle I mean a frog that um, he rides like a horse and basically he's out um, collecting mushrooms for he's sort of like a medicine man type person who looks like a squirrel and he encounters these flying squirrels who are sort of the bad guys. They ride on these birds here and they they hunt in packs and they start to attack him while he's out uh, collecting flower, uh, mushrooms. And he, they come to find out he's a um, warrior in training, I guess. He's got these two earrings on one ear, like one and then another one on that one. And I guess once he graduates or whatever from his training they move the, the, the second earring to the other ear uh, so that's how you can tell that he's in training and then this other character shows up to help him a stranger and um, he does help him and then he feels very grateful towards him and offers to um, give him shelter and food and feel you know as, as payment for helping save his life and um, you know it's kind of a, the artwork in here is interesting um, the backgrounds it's usually just like good art on the characters but then the surrounding area artwork is sort of plain not real uh, detailed which is okay I, I kind of I kind of like it and they use the borders around each uh, scene it's not like a straight edge all the time sometimes it's like a crooked edge like here it almost looks like a silhouette of the two characters and then almost like trees at the top which is kind of a neat idea um, and then there's uh, those flying squirrels you find out they work for these this bad guy he's like an alligator crocodile or something and they live in this dark you know castle kind of place um, and then you find out that this little guy, who looks like a koala bear, I need to find out what kind of an animal he is. Um, he may be some kind of a special character. I guess they're going to go on a quest, or they're going to do something. I, I'm not sure what yet. But, um, it's kind of a fun read, actually. Um, I want to check it out. Um, the website is www.creatorsedgepress.com. Um, take a look at it, see what you think. Let me know. Um, leave a comment. Uh, the second comic I'm going to talk about is Hellraiser. This is issue number one from Boom Studios. Now I remember when the Hellraiser movies came out and I saw them in theaters uh, way back. I guess it was in the 80s or something. Um, this is written by Clive Barker and Christopher Monfett and the art is by Leonardo Manco. Now it has some really neat art in here. Um, I really like the coloring, the style. Um, some pretty nasty stuff in here. Um, but Pinhead, all the all the people from the Hellraiser movies are, are in this, and I guess the Hellraiser people have some sort of overlords or somebody that they report to, and it looks like Pinhead is petitioning them to try to take human form. For what I don't know, but. Um, Pinhead ends up encountering this guy in a field. I guess he, they know each other, and he's got a mission for him. And then it switches to this girl who lives in that house that you, if you saw the movies, and she's got sort of an art room going. I guess she's an artist, and she's got a fiance. And apparently, she did a painting of Pinhead, and she, I guess in the beginning, I guess she's in the beginning too, actually. And she finds that that box that 
you've seen before if you've seen the movies. And she plays with it. I guess it's her. It doesn't, it's unclear, I guess. Um, so, you see that the guy that, um, the, that farmer that he finds in the field or whatever, um, drops something off at this girl's um, mailbox after her fiance leaves. And, um, just sort of ends there. And then there's a whole other story at the back, which I guess it's like a 16 page preview of another Hellraiser story, which I read through it. It was okay. Um, I don't think I'll look for that, that um, trade paperback or whatever it's going to be. Um, but I might check out the second issue of this series and see where they're going to go. And it was kind of a fun read. It was neat seeing the Hellraiser guys again. Uh, the next comic I'm going to talk about is uh, Five Ronin. This is issue number four of five. This one is about Psylocke. And in this issue, um, it starts out, <clears throat> they show you her as a little girl with her father. She's half Japanese, half um, English, I guess. Her father's from England. And um, they call her Butterfly. And they talk about butterflies a lot. Um, she has a butterfly tattoo on her back when she's older. And basically she's, I guess her parents died when she was very young. And she becomes a prostitute. And she's real tough. Uh, she sticks up for the other girls there and, and tries to give them confidence and tells tells them, you know, they need to stand up for themselves. And I guess she can hear people's thoughts, so she's better equipped at understanding what people are like and if they're good people or bad people or whatever. Um, and then Wolverine shows up, his character from... He was in the first of these five Ronin, his little story. So they've crossed paths with Wolverine and Psylocke in this one. And apparently, I guess, the last issue um, is going to have, um, who is it? Deadpool in it. And I'm guessing there'll be more crossovers in that one as well because this sort of ends with uh, Wolverine going to do something. Um, they both, him and Psylocke, are, they have a common enemy, and they both want this person killed. And uh, it's, a, it's a good comic. Great artwork. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was neat seeing Wolverine together with her. There's a couple of shots of them. Um, good, good writing. Great story. Highly recommend that series. And the final comic I'm going to review today is, um, this is Neonomicon issue number four of four. This is from Avatar Press. And uh, this is by Alan Moore and Jason Burroughs is the artist. Now this series, it started out with issue one and it seemed like a neat story. I read number one and I thought, wow, this is cool. And then number two came out and it was very strange and very bizarre. It, there's a lot of stuff in here about H.P. Lovecraft who I had never read anything by but I'd, I'd heard of. And uh, he sounds like a weird character but basically I guess he came up with all these books and ideas and in this comic they talk about how those I and then from his ideas in real life um, I guess people have developed these cults almost based on some of his books and stuff and in the in the comic they twist that story around and say that actually he knew about these groups beforehand these weird cult people and he wrote his books based on them that they already existed before he wrote about them um, which is kind of neat, and so in this series, uh, some FBI agents, a man and a woman, um, go undercover to investigate th this cult, and um, they find out some really weird stuff, and it wraps up into this issue, and um, I don't want to give any of the story away if you're going to check it out, but um, it's very good, good artwork. Um, a neat story, kind of gruesome, kind of bizarre, but um, it's pretty good. Um, and it takes a weird turn at the end, which I don't want to give anything away really, but um, I'll show something. You won't know what it is if you haven't read it. Um, cool artwork. Uh, definitely recommend this series. Definitely for adults though. Um, it definitely takes a weird turn at the end. 
which makes me think that they might do more of these in the future. I'm not sure, but um, if they do, I'll, I'll definitely check it out and let you guys know about it. Um, and then the rest of the comics I got this week that I'm not going to review, I'll just briefly show you. Um, this is Echoes number four by Minotaur. Really enjoy that series. Four or five. Uh, here's The Mission number two by Image Comics. That's a really fun read. The Sixth Gun, this is issue 12, 10, I'm sorry, 10, by Oni Press. I like that series a lot. This is issue 12, uh, The Walking Dead Weekly by Image Comics. Here's a new one, Phoenix. Um, this is by Atlas Originals. This is issue number one, which I mentioned last last week when I reviewed Wolf, issue number one from, from Atlas also. And here's The Grim Ghost, issue number one from Atlas. Um... I thought I'd give them a try since they're going to cross over with that Wolf comic. And I did like the Wolf comic a lot. I thought I'd try these out. And uh, I'll let you guys know what I thought of them. And then the last thing here is Ghostbusters Infestation number 2 of 2 from IDW. Enjoying that. This is the last of these um, Infestation comics. I guess there's going to be a separate one that's not, not based on one of these um, Ghostbusters, G.I. Joe, and the other two, whatever they are, I can't think of them right offhand real fast. Uh, Star Trek and Transformers were the other two. Um, so there's going to be a, a special, just an infestation issue number two, I guess because it started off with an infestation issue number one. And that's going to be in a couple weeks. <clears throat> so um, that's it for this week. Uh, please leave a comment here on YouTube or over my blog at twodognight.net and let me know what you're reading this week and have you read any of the stuff I talked about. And I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.